The Indian Navy chief has said that the twin-engine deck-based fighter jet will replace the current fleet of 41 Russian MiG-29K fighter jets of INS Vikramaditya and INS Vikrant, and will also operate from the proposed third aircraft carrier, taking its fleet strength to at least 98 fighter jets. The Aeronautical Developmental Agency has sought 13,000 crore rupees for research and development and production of first three prototypes, which will be ready for testing in the year 2026, 2027 and 2028 respectively, and will enter serial production in 2030. The Navy expects 40 twin-engine deck-based fighter jets to be delivered by 2034 in initial operational capabilities, and the remaining 58 with additional capabilities in batches by 2040. In order to augment its shortfall in diesel-electric submarines, the Indian Navy is reportedly considering an offer by Russia's United Shipbuilding Corporation for three refurbished Kilo-class submarines, that will be capable of launching submarine-launched cruise missiles, and they have been offered under a $2 billion 3 plus 3 package, that would also include upgrade work on Navy's three existing Kilo-class submarines. The DRDO has developed a new 81mm smoke grenade shell, that will be used from tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and other armoured vehicles, and will replace the current Russian origin system. Only four of these anti-thermal and anti-laser smoke grenade shells can generate a smoke screen of 30 meters wide and 10 meters height for more than 20 seconds. The DRDO will now transfer the technology to Ordnance Factory or a private sector firm for production. The DRDO has successfully developed microbolometers and focal plane arrays for infrared imaging seekers that will be used on various Indian missile systems, and previously the DRDO used to source them from a French company Sofadea, and currently the DRDO is working to further improve its resolution. The DRDO is already working on a new variant of the Astra system, that will have a passive infrared imaging seeker and it will be ready for development trials by 2022. While officers in the armed services have largely welcomed the leasing approach, but some have expressed concern that it could become an easy way out for the government to cater to the needs of the armed forces. They have argued that the actual procurement process could take a back seat, because the critical gap will be fulfilled by lease method. Another argument against leasing is that this could pave the way for foreign companies to get in through the back door, as the armed forces will become dependent on the leased platform, and will eventually end up purchasing them in large numbers from the same manufacturer, rather than being open for any other similar systems. Garden Reach Shipbuilders has laid the keel of the second survey vessel for the Indian Navy, which is a part of the four survey vessels project worth 2,435 crore rupees won by the shipyard in a competitive bidding process in October. The survey vessels will comprise of a variety of state-of-the-art survey equipments like the autonomous underwater vehicles, remote-operated vehicles and multi-beam echo sounders, and will boost Navy's maritime capabilities with coastal and deep-water hydrographic surveys. <laughs> Defence officials of India and Australia conducted a virtual meeting, during which both sides discussed ways to bolster defence production and manufacturing ecosystems of the two countries, and a number of Indian companies like Hindustan Aeronautics Bharat Electronics Limited and several private companies made product presentations on major platforms. After a flurry of bilateral exercises with the navies of US, Japan and Australia and the multilateral joint exercise Malabar 2020, the Indian Navy has started a two-day passage exercise with the Russian Navy in the eastern Indian Ocean region, which would involve advanced surface and anti-submarine exercises and helicopter operations. <laughs> Oh, my God.